Hey everyone, this is Sachu Tababa from Nightlight Astrology, and today we're taking time out to look at some of the stories that you've been sharing recently about the planetary transits. Uh, today we're going to take a look at some of the stories that have been shared through um, the Mars opposition to Neptune. So I'm going to put this up on the screen and share this with you. Here's the real-time clock, and we can see that Mars was opposing Neptune last Thursday, September 2nd, into Friday, September 3rd. And you might have even felt it over the weekend or earlier last week. So we had a whole bunch of stories come in. Um, the way that you can share a story or the way that these stories come into us is through using the hashtag grabbed. The planets in Indian astrology mean, are called grahas, which mean grabbers. But the word can have a dual meaning, which means also to grasp something. So insofar as the gods or the planetary energies are moving all of the currents and uh, forces of nature along like a mighty river, and we are just floating along unconsciously. It is as though the planets are grabbing or seizing our consciousness. And the whole point of studying astrology on one level is to become more conscious so that rather than being grabbed, we are grasping. We're starting to see, we're starting to understand, and all of the planetary energies become teachers. So at any rate, it's been pretty, <laughs> and literally it's, it's pretty funny when we are, when our consciousness is sort of taken over by the planets because, um, you know, sometimes the planets have a really good sense of humor. It's not like it's always something that um, uh, is, uh, you know, happening to us in some kind of ruthless or really intense, difficult way. I mean, sometimes it can be that way, but a lot of the times it's really the things that happen to us with the planetary transits, the kind of stories that people are sharing are very poignant uh, moments of learning and growth. And what I especially love about this series is watching the way in which people are learning and um, reflecting upon their experiences and beginning to see the planets at work. If you're not doing this already, this is the most valuable thing you can do as a student of astrology or as a you know someone who listens to astrology content regularly. You're hearing an astrologer talk about transits. You take it in on a certain level. Maybe you remember it for a day or two, but it really helps if you have like a, something like an astrological journal and you're taking time to listen not only to the planetary the combinations, the uh, archetypes and patterns of the transits that are happening, but you're also reflecting on and seeing, well, how did they show up in my life? When you do that, you're becoming more attuned to the presence of the planets. And that's when we really start to grasp and see things. The, the energies of creation depicted by the planets become our teachers and our guides, our friends, our companions. They become the feeling of soulfulness in our life. The soul starts to feel like I'm here. This is rasa. The rasa means like sort of like flavor and um, an experience of of the varieties of experience, the varieties in life being um, beautiful, and that we're we're here to experience them uh, for the sake of soul learning and soul growth and so forth. You can't get that feeling if you're just taking an astrology content in a kind of spin cycle of action and reaction. There has to be some reflectiveness. So this series is also meant to give people that reflectiveness. I have to say, it always saddens me to see that the viewership on these episodes is slightly less than, or sometimes even like half as much as the episodes in which we're breaking down the transits. What that says to me is that people um, sometimes, unfortunately, this is kind of a truth about astrology in general, is that a lot of people out there are more, um, and obviously if you're watching this, it's not you, but there's a lot of people out there who are just like, just tell me what's going to happen to me. I want the info, but I'm not using this info to grow. I'm not using it as it was intended to be used. So taking time to listen to these stories and to, one, they help you to understand the planetary dynamics, the archetypes, the combinations, the aspects, they're going to help you become a better astrologer. And they're going to help you get into the practice of noticing the transits in your own life. When you do that, the spiritual benefits of astrology start presenting themselves to you and your daily experiences with astrology become what they're actually intended to be. So at any rate, I'm off my soapbox now. Let's share the stories. I've got 10 of them today from Mars opposite Neptune from last week. Some of these are really funny. Some of them are kind of shocking, a little sad. There's stuff all across the board as always. So let's get into them. 10 of them. And each one of these, I'll, I'll try to explain how Mars Neptune is present as well. But here's someone who went to an ayahuasca ceremony. Of course, that's close to my heart as someone who spent about 10 years of my life working with ayahuasca. Um, so someone came in to address a fear of being alone, to surrender chronic vigilance and the need for control, re rooted in the fear of being unsafe. 
And during the ceremony, this individual got stung twice by a literal real scorpion who somehow made its way under a weighted blanket that was in the ceremonial space. <laughs> so it, you can imagine being in an ayahuasca ceremony, which I, you know, I've been in many, and I can tell you that it is harrowing enough on its own, what to speak of being in the midst of a ceremony and then getting stung twice by a scorpion. Sounds like this person came through it okay and felt a very deep level of purification based on what they had to go through as a result of being stung twice during a ceremony. This was a Mars Neptune experience that happened as Mars was um, opposing Neptune. So there's the sting of Mars and the kind of otherworldly space in which the sting was experienced. Neptune became this deep and um, healing experience, but also quite terrifying. Okay, so check, <laughs> make sure you clean out your ceremonial spaces <laughs> in advance, look for scorpions. Anyway, what a story. Here's the second one. This morning, I attended my grandfather's funeral. He was in the Navy during World War II. So there's Mars opposite Neptune, the Navy and water and war, all Mars Neptune themes and thus received a military service. The guns of the color guard fired three shots and everyone began weeping. It was so incredibly Mars Neptune. It's a simple example, but how profound is that? Here's a Navy veteran of World War II receiving these memorialized shots of guns into the air and, and tears start streaming. Such a simple but vivid example of Mars Neptune. Here's number three. My son um, got, was given a, he was given a gift and he smashed the gift while unwrapping it and it was a snorkeling mask. We were think, thinking about going to the pool today, but I'm a bit scared. <laughs> I like the last part. Like, is it an omen? But I mean, it's such a simple example, but here's a, a, a swimming, a gift that's supposed to be like for swimming, Neptune, and it's smashed while unwrapping it. It's broken while unwrapping it. So Mars Neptune shows up as a broken swimming mask. It's so simple and so mysterious too. Like, what does that mean? And I think that that's one of my favorite things about transits is that sometimes they show up in ways that are quite literal, but then it's like, it, it feels like the way that they show up is presenting some kind of riddle or object of meditation. And I would, I would, um, what I would suggest or recommend that people do in such occasions when something like that happens, don't, don't rush to any conclusions or make fear-based decisions, but just pay attention. Something's trying to speak and the planets are speaking in a way that oftentimes it's like the planets want us to solve a riddle because the way in which we're forced to solve a riddle unties certain kinds of knots in our own psyche. And so the untying of the riddle by paying attention, by pay sticking with the image, uh, sometimes we'll just untie certain knots or tensions in, in the psyche, almost like tensed muscles or something. Anyway, it's a very interesting one. Number four, this one's a little tragic. While doing her yoga on the deck last night, um, she was doing a yoga series on the deck and was suddenly stung on her foot by one of those murder hornets. I know you know about them. Immediately, she felt the sting go through her body. As she began to get up, her phone ringtone for her yoga studio, of which she received her yoga teacher training, rang. She was told that her yoga teacher, James, 37 years old, had died suddenly. She screamed. I ran out and went to her and she was weeping as her foot was swelling, but she didn't care about her foot. She was crying because of her yoga teacher dying suddenly. This was a giving young man with an amazing heart full of love and light and transcendental spirit. We're also saddened at his passing. We have no words as to why this happened. He started the Little Project Warriors Yoga and Mindfulness Program for Kids in Camden, New Jersey, which my daughter was a part of. This is such a loss to the community, family, and friends and of the space that we all occupy. Her foot is still swollen, but healing, although her heart has not. Wow. What a sequence of events to be doing yoga, to get stung, and then for the phone to ring and for there to be this heart sting of losing your yoga teacher. And that, that was a heartbreaking example. Number five, I bought my son a vintage luxury shaving kit with straight razor and soap bowl. 
and it arrives as Mars is opposing Neptune. Isn't that interesting? It's this, um, it's this watery, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a watery blade kit, a kit that's meant to shave. Uh, it's a precision knife kind of tool and it arrives with a straight razor and a soap bowl. It's such a, again, it's such a simple example and one in which, I mean, oftentimes I find that it's not, that sometimes there's not anything to decode when it's something that obvious and um, almost literal, but rather it's something to remind us that there is nothing under heaven that not even a blade of grass or a, you know, a grain of sand that isn't, it doesn't exist because of the divine intelligence and divine will, the beautiful orchestration of all things. And that there's not one thing that escapes the eye of heaven, that if we learn how to look at things, we see God in everything, even, and the planets help us to do that because they give us almost like a lens or a, they give us some instructions about how or where to look. It's just so beautiful. So these are two for me that I thought I would share. Uh, number six, my daughter finished her swim lessons and passed her test to move to the next level as Mars was opposing Neptune. I thought that was fantastic. Um, the other thing is I've been practicing jujitsu over the summer, and I realized that I have too many other things going on at the same time. And it was this um, really hard, challenging moment for me because I had been enjoying it of letting go of something that I was enjoying because I was missing family meal time several nights a week. My kids were asking, you know, are you going to be back at some point? Um, I kept repeatedly getting injured. I think I actually uh, cracked a rib. In fact, um, I had a lot of fun with it, but I also realized that um, it, it, this is just my brief summary because I barely, I had a couple months doing jujitsu and it was really fun. And I realized that it's like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, an alchemical crock pot of its own. And there are people who are getting wonderful spiritual benefits and results from doing this practice. And I realized, you know, I have a few of those in my life right now. I've got my marriage, family, kids. Um, I've got uh, being a monk and I have, um, you know, astrology. And it was almost also this realization that I can't do it all. There's so many things that I want to do and um, I have to let go of some of them. So I had to kind of let go of this athletic endeavor that I was having fun with, but that was overwhelming my time and to a certain extent, my body. So, um, I had to let go of that. That was really, really challenging. It was actually like, it was painful. It felt like I was breaking up with someone or something. Maybe I'll have time for it sometime down the road, but beautiful practice. All those out there who I got to share the adventure with a little, for a little while. Thank you. Really had, had fun. Um, and, uh, more power to you. If you're someone who does have time and space for it in your life, cause it seems to me like it's a very beautiful, um, can be very spiritual practice. So I had to let go of that during Mars opposite Neptune. Uh, number eight, someone told, shared with me that they went to their first Greenpeace meeting yesterday with a friend and suddenly felt inspired about doing something that would not bring me any direct personal benefit, but rather I would be doing something for the good of something bigger than myself, which is something we talked about at length with Mars opposite Neptune. There's a joining of a cause bigger than myself. Number nine, there is a grocery store the only one nearby of good quality that I appreciate a lot with fresh products and nice staff. They opened when I moved to this neighborhood. Uh, and today I received news that they're closing down within a week. I feel like something nice is being taken away and I'm helpless to do anything about it. Just a feeling of overwhelming disappointment. So what's interesting about this is that this was actually this transit. This person mentioned was also taking place in their third house, which part of the transit was taking place in the third house, which is the place of your local neighborhood. So something that you really like is facing this challenging uh, moment of dissolution. And there's just this feeling of helplessness and disappointment um, about some, something that you really liked in the neighborhood and circumstances have happened that have uh, beyond your control. So circumstances beyond our control that frustrate or disappoint us. Very Mars, Neptune. Number 10, last but not least, I was finishing a yoga class, enjoying the lingering bliss of Shavasana uh, when another student came up to me um, asking a question. I was too far out in La La Land to focus on what she was saying. She became irritated and started arguing about 
vaccination versus non-vaccination. I was confused, and luckily she moved away from me to continue her conversation with someone else. This happened 27 minutes before the exact Mars opposite Neptune. (laughs) I thought, I mean, first of all, you know, as someone who obviously owned a yoga studio for quite a long time, I can tell you that one of our studio rules was to be very mindful about what we talk about and the way we carry ourselves right after Shavasana, because people are often very open and just kind of floating. We even tell people to be careful, you know, getting into their car and driving home. So here, here's someone coming out of Shavasana and getting like, a, sounds like they kind of got almost like accosted by someone and uh, someone started getting into this very agitated state where they wanted to like argue and get into this. And, the, and obviously someone who was like lacking boundaries in the way that they also became very aggressive with this person, very Mars, Neptune, that situation. And at any rate, so Again, every episode that I do talking about the way that the planets come in and just make their appearances, sometimes they grab us and sometimes we're grasping what they're saying right away. Um, this, I, I like to try to summarize something about living with the planets in everyday life, a few insights, a few lessons. Today, I want to talk about naming your lessons and is naming your lessons is counting your blessings when it comes to astrology. What I mean by that is if you're able to, and there's not just one lesson, but if you're able to name a lesson associated with these stories that you observe in your life, you capture somehow like the, the, the freeze frame of your, in the freeze frame of your journal or your reflections, you capture the moment where the planets capture you. That when you capture that and you take the moment to name a lesson or maybe two lessons or three lessons that arise from that reflective process, not only are you naming a lesson, but you're counting a blessing because when you start looking at experience in this way, you're starting to receive the blessing of experience itself. So name your lessons is counting your blessings when it comes to the planetary dynamics. And that's how we move from feeling like we're being seized to understanding or comprehending something. So let's go back through these. And I'm just going to make up a lesson for each one. These may not be the lessons that each individual actually derived from these, but you know, what do you get out of a ceremony where you're stung, you know, you're stung uh, by a scorpion twice. A sting is an initiation. Uh, A wound is often an initiating moment. That just that shift for some people is really radical. And it can be so healing to realize that because it can then be applied to other moments in life where the scorpion sting is not as literal. I still can't believe that even happened to you, by the way. How about number two? We talked about the memorial service, memories and memorials, something about when we take time to remember things that nothing really dies. There's a way that if we remember something in the heart from the past, people who have passed on things from the past, if we hold it in the memory of the heart in which all memories are sort of perfect, then nothing ever really dies. It's a beautiful lesson that can be extracted by reflecting on how Mars Neptune is present during this World War II Navy Vets Memorial Service. Um, Number three, we talked about smashing the snorkeling mask. The planets give and take away. They give us gifts and blessings, and sometimes the blessings come even in what appears like something that's getting broken or, you know, smashed. They give, they, they, their gifts often come in the way that things break or fall apart. Isn't that a simple lesson, but it's so true. Number four, we had the yoga teacher who got stung by the murder hornet, her foot swelling, but she doesn't even notice it because she's stung in the heart by the loss of her yoga teacher. The stings of the body don't count nearly as much as the stings of the heart. Not that our body isn't important, not that we don't take care of it, not that we don't honor it, but isn't that a simple lesson about what actually matters? That the the sting of the heart completely overwhelmed the swelling of the foot from a murder hornet. What a beautiful reminder that is, and what a gift. What a blessing, even if it's so hard. How about the straight razor and soap bowl? Planets think of us even when we're not thinking of the planets. I love it how the planets just show up sometimes and it's so simple. And it's like, sometimes I just feel like the planets are saying, I'm thinking about you today, even though you had no idea you were thinking about me or that you were being motivated 
through me, the combat, the gods are the combination of gods. Number six, my daughter finished swim lessons and passed her tests. And I said, well, what did you have to do? And she said, I don't remember. I just passed. <laughs> and I thought accomplishments really can't be measured. A real sense of accomplishment lives in the heart. She had already forgotten what she even did to pass her swimming test. And and I was so overwhelmed by that and the Mars-Neptune dynamic. And I thought real accomplishment isn't something we measure in any literal sense. It's the measurement is in the smile, you know, it's in the heart. Number seven, I quit jujitsu. I was really sad that I couldn't go to grappling class anymore. I loved grappling. And then I realized that in struggling so much with trying to prioritize my time and the commitments I already have spiritually and the other processes I've already got going in my life, that I was grappling with the planets and that, that there's something about jujitsu that will live on in me because it was as though there was something I was continuing to wrestle with or that I had to wrestle with that was metaphysical and spiritual and that my love for that dynamic of life can exist in other ways, even though I don't have time for it right now. It was a simple realization. I'm grappling with the planets right now. That was a part of, of helping me understand that it's okay that I don't have time for this at the moment. Number eight, <clears throat> The Greenpeace meeting, we all need something bigger than ourselves to pour our efforts into. And how much joy do we feel when there's at least something that doesn't bring us any direct personal benefit, but that we're going to pour our effort into anyway. Number nine, the grocery store. Every loss matters to the soul, especially those ones that seem really small. As Mars Neptune was passing, someone at the local gym that I go to is, go is no longer going to be there. They're moving. And it was so simple, but I felt that loss, just like this person felt the loss of the local grocery store closing down due to challenges that they can't over overcome. There's just this feeling of helplessness that this, every loss matters to the soul, even those that are just in our own neighborhood. Finally, um, someone talked about Shavasana at the end, number 10, and talked about the, the you kind of getting accosted while in La La Land of Shavasana by another student. Well, and this may or may not have been the case for you and this person when they were in the moment, but real peace can't be stolen, even in the midst of battles. This is at the core of yoga itself. This is what Arjuna learns on the battlefield with Krishna. Real yoga doesn't mean you go off to a cave. It also doesn't mean that you get lost in the battle. You can do yoga in the midst of a battle. So real peace can be very present and, um, and hold boundaries while maintaining that almost that bliss. Uh, and this is a, a simple lesson that one could derive from such an experience. I'm not saying that was your lesson. And so not I'm saying any of these lessons are the lessons that these people experience. I'm just making them up to give you guys a sense. If we name our lessons, we are counting our blessings. We're getting into a way of receiving experiences in the um, variegatedness of divinity. There's truth, there's beauty, there's goodness, there's laughter, there's tears. It's all there in experience when we reflect on it through the prism of these heavenly planets. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this today. I hope that you guys will continue sharing your stories if you have them. Uh, always put hashtag grabbed and then share your story. You can email us grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. Be glad to share your stories. Make sure that you name the aspect and keep it concise. That's Those are the easiest ones for me to end up sharing. Okay, well, that's what I've got for today. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you again soon. Bye.